My, my task here today is to give some some indications of what also even what uh, what what we can learn from our, from from what we can give away from our part of the um, our part of the world. Uh, this is where I come. I also want to save some time since we, we are running a bit uh, running a bit tight. Uh, so I think I go straight on the on the issue. Is there a is there a Nordic energy model? Uh, both uh, both Mr. Lipponen uh, and uh, and uh, Altmaier has been commenting on that, so I won't go very far into it. But uh, of course, each each Nordic country offer unique contribution to Europe's energy and climate change equation. Uh, again, the the examples have been given, and uh, apart from the the energy sources uh, that each each and different uh, countries are providing, also in terms of exporting energy. Uh, the integration of electricity markets uh, across the Nordic region for 10, 15, even almost 20 years is a major source of inspiration, Al also across continents. It's not only for the neighboring region and Russia and Germany and Netherlands and the UK, but also, also globally. There's a lot, of, a lot of people all over the world coming to the Nordic region to see what we have achieved. And I think the next point, a trust-based political system is a good starting point for radical energy change. I think there are fewer lawyers as a percentage of the, of, of the population in the Nordic countries than many other parts of the world. And I think that might, that might help when you're going to make radical change. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong said about lawyers, but I think it's, 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 just, a, it's just an indication. The, 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 um, the, the, the element of, of trust in, in Nordic society and, behind, and which is also very strongly behind the Nordic model is very important. And also Nordic ability to formulate and implement ambitious energy strategies. And I think Denmark and, and Sweden uh, and Finland have been mentioned here. And, and I, I'm coming back to, to our, our, uh, our, our road in, in Norway. But uh, we, ha we, have, we have achieved a lot, but there is a lot of challenges uh, in the future. So are, are, we, are we up to that? First, uh, first some points about Norway. Uh, we, we are a major energy nation. Uh, we are the second largest gas exporter and seventh largest oil exporter. We provide uh, the continent, including Germany, with a lot of gas. Uh, we are a major player in the emerging Arctic energy equation uh, and, uh, and also with the new, new energy finds. Uh, controversial, maybe, and, and, and also a challenge in the, in the overall picture with climate change. So I'll come back to that. We are also a key European player in hydropower. Half of Europe's hydro reservoir capacity is in Norway and Startcraft is Europe's, Europe's largest uh, renewable energy company. Uh, we provide uh, already important green battery functions to Denmark, the Netherlands, and also soon to Germany and the UK. And then uh, we have the world's uh, either largest or second largest, depending on definitions, uh, sovereign wealth fund, currently at US dollar 600 billion. Uh, there is, uh, already there are uh, climate change rules and regulations for the, for, for the, for the fund to adhere to. Uh, in terms of its governance, when, when, when the fund is, is, uh, is uh, discussing with, with boards in, in the 2000 or so companies that it's investing in, uh, climate change is one of the topics. But, and there is a lively discussion, a very lively discussion, whether this fund and also a range of other sovereign wealth funds should take on a much stronger climate change responsibility. There are political demands from some, uh, to political demands from some sources in Norway that since, since we have got rich on oil, which is a fossil fuel, the, the sovereign wealth fund should should only invest in renewable, uh, renewable technologies and not in, not in the fossil fuel industry. That's still a controversial issue in Norway, but I, I just, it, it's, it's part of the discourse. And finally, we have, uh, we have the world's largest oil for development program, uh, helping 20, 25 uh, developing countries to manage oil and gas respo uh, responsibly, the, and, and also, also uh, electricity. Uh, Norwegian achievement. I, I, won't, I won't spend much time on this because uh, we are short on time. But Norway, in a recent report that is coming out, I think this week in Canada, uh, Norway is hailed as a model uh, in, on resource politics and, and governance. Um, and and, and that's, uh, that's, you, you can find that report on, on the web. It's from the Canadian International Council. Uh, but but there, there is one, uh, one element, I think, which is emphasized very much in that report and which I think is very relevant also to, to energy vendor. Uh, both in Germany but in all our countries, and that is the the, the ability that 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 uh, partly luck, pa partly I think uh, good work that that Norway managed to do in the 60s and the 70s, in terms of because there were so many signs that the oil and gas we found could could end up in a catastrophe for Norway because so many other countries didn't succeed in managing that responsibly. 
but, but the manner in, in which politicians took the responsibility, uh, the bureaucracy, uh, other stakeholders, and, and really to have a solid, robust debate. And it is, in fact, very well described in that Canadian report. But I think that is, that is a, a, a very important uh, lesson, I think. And, and I, I think the topics that you have chosen for tomorrow in, in the workshops are, are very topical in terms of, of building bottom-up support for energy vendor by, by taking conflicts, taking the risks, taking the price, taking the costs into consideration, be honest and open. That is, that is the way to, 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 to build sustainable change. So, uh, then, there is a challenge also for Norway. Uh, Norway 2012, 230, 250. Are we, as, as, as a country that is still producing a lot of oil and gas, are we a, a, a part of the problem or a part of the solution? Uh, we, we, are, uh, we are contributing uh, to Europe's sustainable energy transformation. Uh, in some, some other ways are open to debate and maybe, maybe controversial, but we continue long-term gas sales to Europe in support of Europe's efforts to reduce coal consumption. Uh, there was a big question in, in 2025, 2030, 2040, 2050, what would be the role of gas if, if we succeed with, uh, with a sustainable energy vendor? Uh, but but as, lo as long as coal is king, uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there is a strong role for, for gas. And, and then this is a big, uh, big debate and we don't have the time to go into it, but I think it's, uh, that's, it's, important. it's an important message from, from my side that, that, it, that we, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't sort of uh, underestimate the need and the market and, and the possibilities for, for natural gas in, as a bridge towards a sustainable energy future and, and probably also as a long-term long bridge. And one of the paradoxes today is that a lot of coal is important, imported into Europe. The US is, is now exporting coal in a big way because of the shale gas revolution and, 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 and increasing amounts of coal is burnt in Europe. Uh, this is not exactly what is uh, was the hope to, to, to achieve through the energy, energy vendor. So it's important to be realistic and in a realistic, uh, at least uh, short to medium term perspective, gas is probably going to be very, very important. And then uh, as, a, as a petroleum country, uh, to incentivize uh, a world leading low carbon performance across the full range of petroleum production cycle is important. Uh, that's, that's, that's an area where Norway can do something as a responsible petroleum player. Invest heavily in CCS nationally, but also in Europe and globally. And I also mentioned the, 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 the servant wealth fund, because what Norway does uh, nationally is important, but I think we can do even more internationally by, by providing funding and expertise to, to CCS efforts in the countries and in the regions, in China, uh, in the US, in many other places where CCS is really being worked on. And then work to eliminate gas flaring and to minimize emissions from Arctic energy. That, these are also areas where Norway when, when Norway can, can, uh, can um, do important efforts. But then from petroleum partner to sustainable energy partner for Germany and Europe. We are already a major electricity provider to, to Northern Europe. Uh, there is a strategy to provide green battery functions to Germany, UK and Europe more broadly. There is a decision on a, on a, on a cable to, to Germany and then to, to the UK in 2018 and 2020. But, but, uh, but there is uh, much more to be done and, and, uh, and this is really a political, as I will come back to, a political question. And then uh, we, we have the opportunity to exploit our competitive edge as, uh, as, as with our offshore capacities in, 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 in support of offshore wind and then the sovereign wealth fund has been mentioned. But then Europe uh, is a key and even uh, key in present and even more so in future Norwegian energy strategy. That has not been sufficiently realized, I think, in Norway, also because of the, the, the sort of the, the, the primacy of the oil and gas industry until, until now. Uh, we, 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 we can be even better in, in acknowledging and realizing that there is really a, a very strong European dimension to what we can do. And then, uh, um, as I said initially, uh, German and European leadership in, in this area is extremely important. And it's, it's also a, it's, it's a, uh, it's really, a, a, um, uh, really an encouragement to, to everybody working on sustainable energy. I, I spent last week in China and from discussions with, with Chinese, um, Chinese officials uh, in, in, uh, and those sort of responsible for, for aiming to get China into a more sustainable energy path. There is no doubt that the European Union's efforts in climate change, but also in, in, in energy, the, the, the plans to 2050 are, are important. And also Germany's role in particular is, is looked at as, as extremely, uh, extremely important. Uh, there are many challenges and we see many, many clouds on the, on, on the sky today, uh, also in terms of the, the ETS system that is not providing the carbon price that we need in order to, 
to to incentivize a structural change. But I think, but but uh, but even the ETS, even which is really in rough times today, uh, the 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 way that it has managed to to move climate concerns from the PR offices in in European industries to the to the to the office to the real key boardrooms in key industries is is very very important. But then. I'm, I'm asked to talk about uh, political processes and barriers and solutions, and, and I'm going to go quite quite quickly through them and and, and finish soon. But <clears throat> and the energy and climate outlook for October 2012 is not very optimistic. It, it's I, I think Altmaier is and, and and what Germany is doing is is in many way a main major source of optimism. But we also need to be realistic and to and I've I've listed just a. Um, um, uh, a, a number of, of issues that, that need to be of concern to us. It's about the, the continuing uh, increase in global emissions. There is a new oil and gas bonanza that is good for Norway, in, at least in, in one sense. But, but can anything, uh, can anything uh, stop or limit the exploitation of new fossil fuel provinces and sources? The global negotiations are stalled. Uh, there are low expectations for Doha. Looming trade wars over renewable energy. Uh, I read the editorial in China Daily on my way home from China last week. Uh, a major, a major row with the U.S. and also German companies in the U.S. And green protectionism is coming. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's there can be, an, it can be possible to understand, but, but still, uh, it's, uh, it's not a good sign. CCS uh, in trouble. Financial crisis, access renewable sports schemes, ETS I mentioned, and voters and consumers get frustrated and confused. This is a long list, and I will end on a more positive note, but, but just let, let us look a bit more on the bottlenecks and on, on, on the barriers. Uh, fossil, fuel serve, fossil fuel sources ready for harvesting are all already much larger in size than, 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 uh, than, would, than what would really uh, make us able to reduce, to, 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 to reach the goal of a 2% degree warming. Just the, 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 uh, there, there are, this, this is uh, different, the difficult statistics, but, but if you look at both the oil and gas and coal reserves that are really now already in the investment plans of oil and gas and coal companies, there is a lot more than, than, than will make us, make us succeed uh, in, in terms of, of, uh, of reaching the goal. So, so it's, it's a challenge for, uh, for, for Norway in terms of our, our, um, our economic structure, but it's a, it's a challenge for the world and it's a challenge for, in terms of how we are going to, uh, to approach a real, uh, a real success in, in meeting the 2% target. And just one, uh, you've seen it up there already, an impressionistic example of, of, of a barrier. Uh, there were, Mr. Altmaier uh, referred to, to um, to, to the new technologies, and I think there's even in, in new IT and communication technology, there's a lot of positive things also in the interface with the energy industry in, in, in the future. But it, it's just uh, just just to, to look at at the structures that are, are, are dominant in today's world economy. Uh, if you if you compare Apple and Exxon, and 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 the and if you if you if you compare this, the physical. Uh, the, the physical structures that, that need to be changed for a transformation to a sustainable energy world. So the figures speak for themselves, and 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 uh, and in in so so it doesn't it doesn't mean that Exxon cannot be part of the solution, but it it, it says something about what the, what the, what the, the forces we are up against in terms of of uh, of, of moving towards sustainability. Uh, what will it take? A transformation uh, and a global energy vendor, so to speak. Uh, we need, I think, in also in order to 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 move ahead in in terms of of climate change negotiations, we need something like a sustainable crisis consciousness. But but that is very very much a contradiction in terms. Uh, but but still still uh, still I, I fear that this is really needed. My institute has done a lot of, of research on on cre on credible science and science politics interfaces. Uh, IPCC has been extremely important, but but there, we, we should never never underestimate the the the, the danger that 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 uh, the climate change uh, the climate change agenda will be will be um, will be sort of uh, attacked and and uh, and also get into big problems by scientific disagreement. This is uh, the, the in many ways uh, people ten years ago maybe. Uh, assume that the debate has been won, but 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 it's in a global perspective in China and the U.S. all over. There are all the times need. Uh, it's very important to to invest in a credible science and science politics interface, fairness and effectiveness. China again. Uh, there's a lot of discussion for China to really engage in 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 global climate cooperation. 
uh, we need to consider ways also to factor in, for instance, uh, in like Dieter Helmerston in a new book, Car uh, Carbon Crunch, he says that the UK is, a, is an Oxford professor, that UK, instead of having reduced emissions by 20%, if it takes into account what, what, what the UK uh, consumes that was produced in China, uh, the, the emissions of, of UK has increased and not decreased. And of course, that, that currently, China has to pay for these, for these emissions. But, but, the, but, but, but they, are, they are consumed by the UK. So, so of course, Chin Chinese experts are seeing all that. And they are giving advice to the policymakers. So that also means that we need to, we need to look into some of these, uh, some of these, aspect, these aspects. We need to think of, of uh, new, um, new, uh, new, new, climate, new, new ways to work on climate regimes. We need to stay the course on market-friendly reforms at, at a local, national, and, and global level. Green protectionism is a danger, and we see many signs of it now. And then, uh, therefore, also embrace China, resist protectionist pressure. I may be a bit influenced by my recent trip to China, but uh, but then uh, finally, uh, what will it take? Uh, get serious about coal to gas transition, uh, reform electricity, and ensure predictable policy frameworks for gas. I've been I've been uh, been talking about that. Accelerate CCS investment, but be frank and humble about costs and other uncertainties. I think many, many, many climate change reports, like the Stern report from the UK, that was very influential, uh, came uh, came out saying that that uh, climate action is cost-free. Just look at what Altmaier had to say today. Climate change uh, policies, if you are going to reach the climate goals, it's never going to be cost-free. There, there are costs, and, and politicians should be frank about it, because else you get... Uh, you, uh, else the, the, the price rises are coming back with the revenge. Lines of contention. Uh, we need a parad paradigmatic change of speed in terms of building cables and transmission lines. Uh, there was an interesting Financial Times article last week uh, uh, named Lines of Contention from, from Germany's efforts to, to build public support for, for, for new transmission lines. Don't panic, but no place for complacency about the ETS system. Is there a time to rethink the carbon tax option? This is uh, heresy. This is not, not sort of real politic today. But, uh, but I, I'm, uh, I'm tempted to at least to raise that as an, as an issue uh, because of the serious prob problems with the ETS. I don't say that we should give up on ETS by no, by no means. But, but we have to take the problems uh, seriously. And we have to, to uh, keep options open. Support current renewable technologies in ways that do not lock them in and deter essential new developments. I heard very much along that lines from the minister, and, and I'm, 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 I appreciate that very much. Invest massively in new research and technology development. Current technologies do not add up. And, and, uh, and the, the, what I mentioned to the, to in the end here is, is are some of the technologies, some of the, the, the uh, developments that have been pointed to that, that, uh, that are going to be very, very, very important in the future. Finally, the politics of sustainable energy transformation. It's repeating a bit, but uh, it's important to, to, uh, to claim that this is about people, consumers, voters. Pr prioritize vision, honesty, transparency, and consultation. Again, this is not going to be cost-free. And, and, and I think uh, the, the minister who has just left us here is, is, a, is a fantastic example of, of, a, of a politician that is going out to the people and, and advocating his, his vision and honesty and transparency and, and is, is willing to consult. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model uh, in, in, in that regard. Be honest about uncertainties, costs and trade-offs. There is no free carbon lunch. Uh, be tough and brave on the NIMBY phenomenon. Transmission lines are beautiful and sexy. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's something that people have to be convinced of uh, if you are going to succeed in, in the energy vendor. And invest in global climate diplomacy and confidence. Find new ways of engaging China and the other BRICS. Okay, this is uh, a lot in 20 minutes, but, uh, but uh, these are, these are uh, and, and forgive me for the pace, uh, but, uh, but uh, I hope I have brought some points to you to reflect on in the debate to come. Thank you.